The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by the Seat Law Offices, 53 West Foothills Drive and Drums, phone 570-359-3283, or visit us online at theseatlawoffices.com. By Dr. and Mrs. Victor F. Greco and the LaSant family. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Friends, we gather here at Holy Annunciation Parish, St. Gabriel's Church, to celebrate this fourth and final Sunday of the Advent season. We are drawing close to Christmas, and we need to prepare ourselves to worship the Lord who is to come. So let us humble ourselves in his sight and ask mercy for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go. Tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went. I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. 
For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are truly now in the very last days before Christmas. Our Advent wreath is completely lit and we are looking forward to that day. And the Holy Word of God leads us to consider what brought about that day, how it all began when the angel Gabriel came down from heaven to Mary, the chosen one of God, and how Mary embraced with joy, with faith, with love, that she would become in some mysterious way even that she could not grasp to be mother of God come down from heaven, the Son of God born upon this earth, Jesus. Now that is a story that we know very well. And from the very moment that it first started to happen, the world began to change. Mary was transformed by this meeting of God 
joined to her very self. And she immediately set out to visit that very Elizabeth, whom we heard in the words of the gospel. And upon meeting Elizabeth and her unborn child, John the Baptist, they too became believers, were transformed by the very presence of the Son of God in our midst. And that's, that's what Jesus has come to do, to reach out to each and every one of us, to touch our hearts and souls, to be transformed into him. But actually, the first person to believe and be saved by the presence of Jesus in Mary is not mentioned here. That person is Joseph, the spouse of Mary, the very first person to learn of all of this after Mary, for the angel came to him, and he understood and embraced and believed. And thus he became redeemed by Christ, and he becomes the greatest of all followers. His presence is often overlooked, but it's probably a good idea to try to understand what he understood. I'm an oblate of St. Joseph. These are things that constantly capture my attention as I try to understand through the eyes of Joseph. How did he get ready for that first Christmas day? It was very busy. It was very demanding. We are all understand about that, but not in the way that we do it. He was leaving on a great voyage to Bethlehem to fulfill the requirement of the law. His was not the preparation of decorations and presents and feasting and family. His was the preparation for a long and difficult trip, dangerous and sacrificial, to arrive in a faraway place among unknown people without hardly any resources. It was one that took everything that he had, and yet I truly believe it was a preparation that he did with joy, with contentment, with peace. Why? Because his focus was not upon all of the other things that were going on. He dealt with them. His focus was upon Mary and the child. Because as long as they were together, he had everything, everything. And that's what made his life content and full. And all his preparation was to stay focused on them, taking care of them, serving them, being with them. And that led to that first Christmas there in the manger in Bethlehem. Something that perhaps we can try to borrow as we go through these final days. The humble, hidden way of St. Joseph keeping focused on Mary and Jesus is the very best preparation of all. Because we're getting ready now, let us renew our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
confident that God is involved in the details of our lives, let us offer to him our needs and concerns. For the church, that all the faithful will have courage like Mary and Joseph to say yes and follow in God's ways of faithfulness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who rule and hold power over others, may they govern with equality, integrity, justice, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in any way during this Advent season, may they know Jesus and the comfort of those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of this Advent season to foster a greater respect for the precious gift of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, may their reward be eternal joy in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us take a moment to call to mind the, the special prayers we want to unite to the sacrifice of the Mass today. Father and author of our lives, hear our petitions and strengthen us to follow your will. For we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we accept him, sacrifice him, set this day be pleasing to you. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may fi he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. 
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <laughs> Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fourth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by the Siege Law Offices, 53 West Foothills Drive and Drums, phone 570-359-3283, or visit us online at thesiegelawoffices.com. By Dr. and Mrs. Victor F. Greco and the LaSant family, 